thank you everyone for coming to this webinar. I am so excited to have Wendy Weiss here with us today. Um, you know, if you don't know who Wendy is, she is the queen of cold calling. And to be perfectly honest, I think I mentioned this before our broadcast today. Um, when I first started as an entrepreneur, uh, my first company, Exchange Leads, I think Wendy and I did a webinar together. It might be five or six years ago. And I learned so much from her that I actually reached out to her a few weeks ago and said, we have to do it again. Um, so I'm so excited to have her here. Some of the stuff Wendy's going to be talking about today is, you know, how to bypass voicemail altogether, the voicemail formula, and the voicemail message. But, um, you know, I don't want to take up any more time because I'm really excited to hear what Wendy has to say. But Wendy, welcome. Thanks for coming. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to be here today, Sean. And I'm really happy uh, to be here with all of you today. So our topic for today is getting prospects to return your calls, because I think that is probably uh, one of the biggest issues facing sales professionals that are trying to reach prospects is voicemail. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. And um, my goal for today is I want to teach you a system that gets more prospects to respond, full stop, period. Warm leads, cold leads, doesn't matter. Uh, when you're stopped by voicemail, it's really difficult. So uh, that, that is my goal for today. And this is what we're going to be talking about. Um, as Sean said, we're going to talk about how to bypass voicemail because if you can get the person on the phone, that's the best of all. So how to bypass voicemail. I'm going to teach you my voicemail formula to increase response. Um, I'm also going to share with you uh, the voicemail message that almost always gets a response. Um, I will take questions. That is my favorite part. Anytime I do a webinar, uh, answering questions is always my favorite part of any webinar. So if you have questions as we're going along, type them into the chat box. Uh, later in today's session, uh, Sean's going to give me your questions. It'll be my pleasure to answer them because that's my favorite part, hands down. Um, and then also at the end of today's session, uh, for those of you uh, that are ready to take this uh, next step, if you are a business owner, and you need more qualified appointments, or you manage a team of salespeople and they need more qualified appointments. Um, I'm gonna share just a few details of our 3X appointments coaching program and invite those of you uh, who would like to do so to have a conversation. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, quickly share how this happened. How did I get here? I was never supposed to be the queen of cold calling. I was actually supposed to be a ballerina. I grew up in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I moved to New York City where I still live and work. I moved here when I was 17 to dance. I studied at the Joffrey Ballet School. And then eventually like every artist in New York City, I needed a day job. And uh, I waited on tables for a while, that, that got old quickly. And then I got a job with a telemarketing agency that did business development. And it turned out I was good at it, which was a complete surprise because ballet dancers don't talk. We dance, we don't talk. So I did that day job for a while. And um, then I started my own business where I had clients that I would represent and I did all the business development for them. And it was actually one of those first clients that dubbed me the queen of cold calling because I found so many opportunities for him. And so from that beginning, I segued into the business that I have today, which is working with business owners, working with entrepreneurs, working uh, with sales professionals that need to build a pipeline, especially today because everything has changed. And um, so over the years, I've written a bunch of books. Here are some of the books I've written. My first book was Cold Calling for Women, uh, The Sales Winner's Handbook. The Cold Calling Survival Guide and a Practical Guide to Getting Sales Teams to Prospect. Um, here are some of the clients I've worked with over the years. Uh, CBRE, Jones Lang LaSalle, New York Life, Sprint, Avon, ADP, the American Heart Association. Here are some of the folks, uh, some of the media where I've been interviewed, had articles, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
here is the point that I really want to make, and this is why I am sharing all of this. I was really lucky because early in my career, all those years ago, when I got that day job, they taught me this skill. And learning this skill enabled me to build a business. So the really good news for any of you uh, that are struggling with this, or any of you, if you manage a sales team and they're struggling, this is a communication skill. It can be learned and it can be improved on. And, you know, there is this myth out there of the born salesperson that somehow there are these people out there that are just born knowing what to do and knowing what to say. That is not true. That is a myth. And so I'm not a born salesperson. I was just really lucky because when I got that day job all those years ago, they taught me this skill. So the really good news is you can learn it too. Your team can learn it too. Um, so, you know, this, this particular skill set, I'll share with you, it takes about 10 years to train a ballet dancer. It will not take you or anyone on your team 10 years to learn this skill. It, you can learn it in a matter of months, at least the basic skill set. So um, for any of you that might be struggling, there is hope. So the first thing I want to talk about right now is the elephant in the room, which is that things have changed and a lot of people are working remotely. And one of the things that I hear all the time is uh, clients will say to me, well, you can't reach anybody because everybody's working remotely. Well, you know what? Maybe in the beginning when, you know, places first shut down, everything was kind of chaotic. Businesses didn't know how they were going to navigate this. But by now, they are set up. They have phone systems in place. So the reality today is that if you are reaching out to a prospect, that company, uh, they have rerouted their calls with, through their phone system, however they've done it, um, and you can reach them. Worst case scenario, people are calling in for voicemail messages, which is why it's so important to leave a good message to get someone to return your phone call. So um, what I'm going to be sharing with you today, actually, uh, I think I mentioned my 3X appointments coaching program before. This is all uh, content. This is what part of what we teach in the 3X appointments coaching program. So I want to begin just with some strategies to bypass voicemail because if you can get your prospect on the phone, that's always the best case scenario. So let's, let's begin. Ask the gatekeeper, ask the frontline person. If you make a call and you reach a gatekeeper and they say your prospect's not available, be a detective, ask some questions. You know, when is he done with that meeting? Uh, what time does she come in in the morning? When is the best time to reach him? Just ask some questions and try whenever that gatekeeper suggests that you might be able to reach them. Uh, get a direct number. If you have a, a general number for a company, ask if, if you reach a frontline person, does she have a direct line so I don't have to bother you again? Get the direct line. Um, get the cell phone number. Um, you know, five years ago, maybe we didn't call people on their cell phones. Today, everyone uses their cell phones for business. So it's perfectly fine. Ask a gatekeeper. Uh, for the cell phone. People even put their cell phone numbers on their websites. And if you can't uh, get the information easily that way, there are all sorts of websites that, where you can get the information. Um, spydialer.com is one where you can plug in a person's name and possibly, if they're listed there, get their cell phone number. Actually, I'll ask Sean, do you have resources uh, at Autoclaws to get cell phone numbers. So you know what, we, we actually, I, I just wrote that down. I've, we do not have, we strictly focus on email. Um, we do have the phone numbers, but I actually never heard of that company before. So that's interesting how to find out cell phones. I, I just wrote that, that name down. I'm gonna go look at that after the oh, webinar okay. today. Well, there's actually a lot of, web, a number of different websites uh, where you have, if one, you can't get it on one website, there are other websites that, that you can check, but it is not, you can get people's cell phone numbers is the point I really do want to make. Um, and uh, 
also get alternate numbers. There, uh, if people are working in different locations, there might be different phone numbers. Get all the information, make sure you get the, the email address as well. Um, and make sure to vary your calling times. If you're always calling the same human being at the same time every day, just mix it up, call them at different times because maybe, especially when people are working remotely, they may not be keeping nine to five kind of hours. So call them at different times to see when you might be able to reach them. Um, and do call outside of business hours. Uh, in uh, pre-COVID people, uh, gatekeepers, support staff pretty much would work 9 to 5 or 8.30 to 4.30 so you could reach people before or after those hours. Well, when people are working remotely, you don't know what hours they're working. So try them at different, try them at different times. Choice B is call them during lunch. Um, you don't know when they take lunch, so call them during lunchtime. They may very well be working and you can reach them directly because uh, if they do have frontline support people answering phones, they might be answering their own phone if the frontline people are having lunch. You can also dial zero for help. Lots of times people will leave on an outgoing message. They'll say, um, if you need assistance, dial, they'll give you an extension for their assistant or dial zero for help. Basically what you're looking for here is information. You dial whatever the extension they give you or that you dial zero for help and you say, I'm wondering if you could help me. <laughs> I need to reach Jane Jones, whatever your prospect's name is. When is a good time to reach her? Will, will, she, will she be in later today? You know, and just get some information. Um, here's something, it, it doesn't work quite as well as it used to, but it does still work. Send your prospect an email, attach a read receipt. Keep your, your email open. And um, when they get that email, even if you get a read receipt back that says they didn't open it, they are likely to be near a phone because they're either at their desk or they're reading the email on their smartphone. So that might be a good time to try and reach them. And lastly, if you're calling a fairly large company, deliberately call the wrong number. And this is what I mean. Let's say you're trying to reach your prospect and their number uh, ends in uh, one, two, three, four. Well, call one, two, three, five, and one, two, three, six, and one, two, three, seven, until you reach a human being. It will not be the right human being, but that doesn't matter because when you reach a human being, you say to that human being, oh, I'm wondering if you can help me, which by the way is a magic phrase. I'm wondering if you can help me. I must have misdialed. I'm trying to reach Jane Jones. I thought her extension, given the extension, can you connect me please? The reason you might want to do this is if you have somebody that checks caller ID and you call them directly, your phone number will show up or your name will show up or your company name will show up. If you call the wrong number within a company and get transferred, it will come up as an internal call. So if you have someone that watches caller ID and doesn't pick up for people they don't know, they might pick up an internal call. So that is something that you can do simply to bypass voicemail altogether. But, but let's say you tried out all these tricks and you're still not able to get that, that prospect, that human being you want to talk to, you can't get them on the phone. That's okay. One of the questions that I am asked all of the time, people say to me, well, Wendy, you know, should I send, should I even bother leaving a voicemail? Should I just send an email? Because nobody ever calls me back. Isn't it better to just send an email? And actually my answer is do both. And here's the reason. Um, this is actually uh, from an article that was in the New York Times, but there was research done at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. And um, as the New York Times said, the research shows that text-based communications, meaning an email, uh, a social media post, 
a text, a letter. Text-based communications may make individuals sound less intelligent, less intelligent than when the same information is communicated orally. And the findings imply that old-fashioned phone conversations or in-person visits may be more effective when trying to impress or perhaps close the deal. What this uh, research study did, they tested written communication, uh, email, letter, uh, text, against spoken communication, which could be when you're face-to-face -face with someone, it could be on the phone, or it could be a voicemail. What they discovered was that when people hear you talk, even if it's on a voicemail, they are more likely to act on whatever it is you're talking about. And so um, the answer is not voicemail or email, it's both, okay? And um, even if, and I'm gonna talk about this in a minute, but what, what we've seen is that people do tend to respond more to the email. But this is what we have seen internally, and I'm gonna walk you through the formula. This is what we've seen internally, and this is also what we've seen from our clients. When you stop leaving the voicemail, because you think, oh, everybody's responding to my email, so I'm just gonna stop leaving the voicemail, the response rate goes down. So that's why you want to do both, okay? And here's some more research for you. This is according to Zoom Info. Uh, the average voicemail response in 2020, that's this year, the average response rate is 4.8%. And you look at that number and you go, hey, that's, that's not a lot. That's not a very high response rate. So why should I even bother leaving a voicemail? This is why we're gonna do some math, okay? Um, let's say that you dial the phone 20 times a day and there are five days in a week. So that means you're gonna dial the phone 100 times a week. And I just picked these numbers to make the math easy. You may be doing more, more dials. Uh, you might be doing fewer, but 20 dials a day, that's 100 dials a week. There are 52 weeks in a year. I'm gonna give you two weeks for vacation. So that means at the end of the year, 50 weeks times 100 dials a week, you would have dialed the phone 5,000 times. Let's say that only 1% of those people returned your phone call. At the end of the year, you would have had 50 additional conversations, okay? Now, it is very unlikely, if you are dialing the phone 5,000 times in a year, it is very unlikely that you would notice this number. You would think nobody calls you back. But in truth, there would be 50 of them. If 1% of them returned your phone call, there would be 50 of them returning your phone call. So let's say we went with the Zoom info number, 4.8% of them returned your phone call. Well, that would be 240 additional conversations at the end of the year. Let's say we got 10% of them, which is a completely doable number. When we do our 3X appointments program, we get that number or higher. At the end of the year, that would be 500 additional conversations. What would happen to your sales or your business or your life? What would happen to your bottom line if you had 500 additional conversations with qualified prospects? What would happen? So when you're thinking about leaving a voicemail or sending that email, you have to ask yourself, what is the goal? And most people would say that the goal is you want to set an appointment. I would actually argue that your goal is to get a response. That's what we're going for. Uh, we want that human being that we're reaching out to, we want them to respond. And you know what? Even if they say, go away, leave me alone, don't call me anymore. They're doing you a huge favor because now you know. Now you can start reaching out to somebody new that is gonna say yes to you. So our goal here is, is to get a response. And more research here, this is from the RAIN group. Uh, they did this research last year. It takes an average of eight touches to get an initial meeting or other conversion with a new prospect. So basically it takes eight touches to get someone to respond. Um, in your industry, it might be more, it could be less, um, but th that's, that's the average uh, across all industries. So um, knowing 
that we have to do eight touches to at least eight touches to get someone to respond. Um, here is the voicemail formula, and it's having a measurable process, having messaging that resonates, and then being able to compel action. Um, this is the voicemail formula that we teach in the 3X appointments program. And by the way, I don't know if I said this earlier, we call it 3X because people routinely triple their numbers uh, when they do this program, uh, three times the number of qualified appointments. So let's begin with process. Um, the idea behind process, and this is something that's actually not talked about a lot. Um, we want to create and benchmark a process because if you don't have a process, if you don't have a benchmarked process, you don't actually know what works. And um, if you manage salespeople, don't leave it up to them. Uh, create the process, um, benchmark it so then you know the numbers and then you, you have what you need to make them successful because you know what works. And if you hire someone new, you can hire that new per or you can plug that new person into the process that you have already proven to work. So the process that we teach that I recommend is doing what I call a voicemail campaign. It's a combination of voicemail and email. And I, I call this a drip campaign for voicemail and email. That's, that's what we're doing. So this is the structure of a voicemail campaign um, because we know that it takes a minimum of eight touches to get someone to respond, we're gonna start with eight touches. So here, here we go. Week one, you reach out to the prospect. If you get voicemail, you leave voicemail number one and you send email number one. Now, voicemail one and email one are the same. They're the same message, it's just one's a voicemail, one's an email. So it's not either or, it's both. Leave the voicemail, send the email. You wait about a week. If you haven't heard back, you reach out again. If you get voicemail, you leave voicemail number two, which is different from number one, and you send along email number two, which is the same as voicemail number two. So the voicemail email combo always mirrors each other, but, these, but they're different from the week before. Um, you wait about a week. If you haven't heard back, you reach out again. If you get voicemail, you do the voicemail three, email three combo, which is different from one and two, different message. And uh, week four, if you haven't heard back, you wait about a week, call them again. If you get voicemail, you leave voicemail four, you send email four. So you have now touched this prospect eight times in the period of a month, okay? Um, if you do not hear back, from the prospect, you don't throw that lead out. As long as you still think it's a good lead, you just recycle it um, three months, six months, a year out, which is contingent on how many leads you have. And um, if there is a date involved, for example, we work with a lot of people in commercial real estate, they call on lease expirations. We work with a lot of um, insurance folks, uh, they're, they're calling on uh, renewal dates. But otherwise, it's just, you have a lot of leads, recycle it further out. You don't have as many leads, try them again sooner. Um, Peter Drucker very famously said, that which is measured improves. Now, uh, Business Week called Peter Drucker the man who invented business management. And um, so what he is saying here is that when you have a process, and you track it and you measure it, then you can improve on it. Uh, the problem is that a lot of people don't track this. And if you don't track it, you don't know how you're doing. You don't know what works. And if you make changes, you don't know if the changes you've made are better. Does that improve things? Or does it make it worse? And if you manage salespeople, having this in place, is gonna go a long way towards making them uh, really, really successful. What, um, what we track are, uh, in, in terms of voicemail and email, 
the number of responses and which are, do they call back or did they respond to the email? Most people, as I said before, most people will respond to the email. But what we've seen is if you stop leaving the voicemails, the response rate goes down. Um, but the number of responses, are they calling or are they responding by email? And which voicemail email combo are they responding on? Um, because that's, if they're responding on message number two, can very consistently, that's probably your strongest message. And maybe you don't need as many messages. Um, what was the response? If your response is very consistently, I'm not interested, take me off your list, then you've got a problem either with the targeting for that, the people you're reaching out to, or you've got a problem with the messaging because if everybody that you talk to or try to talk to says, I'm not interested, that means they don't think you're saying anything interesting. So in the 3X Appointments Program, we do help it help everybody put this together, but this is the, the uh, that is the formula that we follow. That is where we start. We track it, we measure it, we benchmark it, and then we can tweak it if need be, if you need more let messages or fewer messages. Okay, so then the next uh, stop along the process, the voicemail formula, is the message. We talked about having a measurable process. Uh, next, we need a message, a message that resonates, because this is really just like real life. People in real life respond to what you say to them. In sales, people respond to what you say. On a voicemail, people respond to what you say. So it's really just like real life. And I know you've all heard the expression, what's in it for me, W-I-I-F-M. If you imagine that all of your prospects are listening to radio station, what's in it for me? Because the sad but very true, very true truth is that nobody cares what you do. They care how they're gonna be better off when you finish doing whatever it is that you do. And I, and I want to give you an example here. But here's, here's a way to think about it. Um, sell the, you want to sell the destination, not the plane. Imagine. Imagine, uh, maybe pre-COVID, you wanted to take your dream vacation. And uh, you went to a travel agent. And the travel agent said to you, you're going to get a plane ticket. And uh, you uh, can print out a boarding pass 24 hours before, or you can have your boarding pass on your phone. And there's curbside check-in. Um, you can also check a baggage, or you can carry it on, because we're going to give you an overhead bin, or you can put it under your seat. And then we're going to give you a complimentary soft drink and some pretzels. You'd go find another travel agent, because you don't care about the plane. You want the dream vacation. You want the destination. That's what most people do when they talk about what they do. You want to sell the destination, not the plane. So let me give you an example here. We had somebody that was in uh, our 3X appointments program uh, last spring. And she worked with nonprofit agencies. She helped them produce fundraising events. So I was working with her and I said to her, why should a nonprofit agency be interested in working with you? And she said, well, we have a very special proprietary process. And I said, okay, so what? And then I relented and I said, tell me about your process. And she said, well, we meet with the prospect or we meet with our client. And I said, okay, so what? And she said, well, we ask a lot of questions. And I said, okay, so what? And then she said, well, we analyze the answers. And I said, okay, so what? And then she said, well, then we make recommendations. And I said, okay, so what? How are your clients better off after you uh, meet with them, ask them questions, analyze the answers and make recommendations? She said, oh, their fundraising events make money. I said, bingo, that's what you have to talk about. And that's selling the destination. Your fundraising events are going to make money not the plane. We have a special process, we meet, we analyze, we recommend. So we helped her create uh, 
first of all, an introduction that got her the appointment, but also a series of voicemails and emails that talked about she had a lot of different clients she'd worked with over the years. She'd helped them raise a lot of money. So she had stuff to talk about, and that's what she talked about. And in doing that, she was selling the destination, not the plane. Um, so that's actually what you need to talk about. When you live a voicemail message, you've got about 60 seconds. Sell the destination, not the plane. Okay, so talked about two pieces of uh, the voicemail formula. The first is having that measurable process. The second is creating that message, that series of messages that's going to resonate. And then the third one is having a way to compel prospects to take action. Because remember, that's what we want. We want them to respond. Uh, you know, yes, I want to talk to you. Or uh, no, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> but even no, I don't want to talk to you. That's fine, because you have resolution. And you can move on to another prospect. The, the thing that is really hard is just not knowing. So we want, we want a response. And typically, um, the last message, the, I call this the move on message, but this is the response mechanism. Um, it is the last message in the sequence. So if you are doing a four call voicemail campaign, that's four voicemails and four emails, this is gonna be voicemail number four, email number four. If you do five, then it's gonna be, you know, five voicemails, five emails, it's gonna be number five voicemail, number five email, and so on. If you do three, it's gonna be number three voicemail and email. Um, it is the last message in the sequence. And it goes like this. I tried to reach you a number of times to discuss and you fill in the blank with whatever it was that you wanted to talk about. I haven't heard back from you. I know you're really busy. So I'm assuming that this just isn't a good time for us to have this conversation and I don't wanna be a pest. So I'm gonna cease and desist and uh, I will check back with you. And then you name a time frame. that this is your recycle time frame. I'll check back with you in three months or I'll check back with you in six months or I'll check back with you next year. Again, the contingent on how many leads you have. Um, you know, I don't wanna be a pest, so I'm gonna cease and desist and I'll check back with you sometime next year to see if anything has changed. If you've been meaning to get back to me and you just haven't had the chance, I'd welcome the opportunity to discuss, fill in the blank with whatever it is you wanna talk about. Um, this is actually the most returned message typically. Um, and uh, often with an apology, actually. You do need to have left some good messages previously. You can't just skip to this last message. But if you've left some really uh, smart, compelling messages previously, and then you leave the move on message, and I'll, I'll repeat it. I've tried to reach you a number of times to discuss, fill in the blank. I haven't heard back from you. I know you're busy. Um, so I'm assuming this just isn't a good time uh, for us to talk, and I don't want to be a pest. So I'm going to cease and desist. Uh, I'll check back with you sometime next year to see if anything has changed. If you've been meaning to get back to me and you just haven't had the chance, I'd welcome the opportunity to discuss, fill in the blank with whatever it is that you want to talk about. And um, it is amazing the number of responses that you, you will get to this message, often with an apology. Oh, gee, Wendy, I'm so sorry. I've been meaning to get back to you, but you know, this happened or that happened. They, they give you a reason. Um, this is why this works. Most sales professionals never tell their prospect that they're not gonna call again. This, this is, I bet some of you do this. You're going through your list, you come to a name, you go, ah, I've called this guy enough, I'm not gonna call this guy again. And you just skip them. Um, that's what a lot of people do. Most sales professionals, they just, they never tell their prospect that they're not gonna reach out again. They just stop. Um, Here's the thing. Your prospects think you're a salesperson and you're gonna keep calling them. They may be very interested in speaking with you and you may be on their list, 
but um, you're probably down at the bottom because they think you're going to keep calling them. But if you just stop and you don't tell them that you're stopping, then the two of you may never connect, even if they do want to talk to you. And here's the thing. There are prospects that are in the market today for whatever it is you're selling. There are people in the market right now that want to buy it. And there are prospects that, uh, you know, maybe they're not in the market today, but they know at some point in the future they will be in the market. And so these are the people that will return a phone call or respond to the email. But if you don't tell them that you're stopping, they think you're going to call them and they may not reach out. So when you say, I don't want to be a pest, I'm going to cease and desist, they will get back to you if they want to talk to you. And um, if you do, as I said earlier, if you do not hear back from them, that's okay. As, if you still think that, that is, that's a good lead for you, then you just recycle them. Try them again in three months or try them in six months or try them in a year. Uh, maybe their situation will be different and they'll be open to talking to you then. So to summarize what I've been talking about today, all right, the first thing, and this is so important, it's hardly ever talked about. The first thing is process. Um, having a step-by-step -step, uh, benchmarked process um, that you're, you are tracking, because when you, when you do that over time, you know what works and then you can tweak it you can improve on it because you know your numbers and you uh you can make if you make a change you know if that made the message stronger you're getting a better response or it didn't didn't move the needle at all or maybe it made it worse but if you're not tracking it if you don't have that process that you're following you don't know what works and if you manage salespeople, um putting this in place for them is going to go a long way towards making them really successful. Um, and if you're, if you're a sales, uh, sales representative and your company doesn't have that process in place, it's something you're going to want to put in place for yourself because it's just going to make you more successful. Um, then having those messages that resonate, having that combination of the voicemail and the email. And again, this is like real life. People respond to what you say. So if you're not getting a response and you've, you've tracked it, as I said, in, in step one process, and you're not getting a response, it likely has to do with the messaging. So then you're going to tweak the messaging. Um, to sell the destination, you're going to be laying on a beach with a drink with an umbrella in your hand, um, and the sky is blue, and the ocean is... Uh, the ocean is blue and the sand is golden, not you're going to get a plane ticket and you can check your bag, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then use the move on message to compel action. It is absolutely, we see it internally, we see it with all of our clients, it is the most returned message uh, of the sequence. Okay, so um, I have to ask, has this been helpful so far? I hope it has. I'm going to open up for questions in just just a bit because that that is my favorite part. So if you have questions uh, about what I've been discussing um, or anything else having to do with prospecting, it's a very broad topic. Type your questions into the chat box, and uh, Sean's going to give me your questions. Um, we before. definitely do have questions, Wendy. It looks like we have uh, a lot of questions. I actually have a few questions myself, so it'll be it'll be a fun Q and A at the end. Okay, oh, wonderful, I'm excited. And um, so what I do wanna say is, because this, this is a very complex topic and uh, much as I would like to be able to do it, there's just so much ground to cover and we can't cover it all, even just about getting prospects to return calls, let alone setting more appointments in just an hour. So um, I would like to invite those of you that are, would like to have a conversation with me about the 3X Appointments program to do that. Uh, this is Peter. He did our program a couple of years ago. Uh, his company's revenue doubled in a year. Um, this is Jerry. He actually, before he, he was getting a lot of appointments, he was running all over the place. The problem was they were with completely the wrong people. 
he couldn't help them. And once he learned the system, um, as you can see, he doubled his revenue uh, without doubling his effort. And uh, this is Jennifer who just said it was life changing. She bought a house, motorcycles, scooters, restored 69 MGB on one income. Um, so that is uh, all through the 3X Appointments program. So if you're the kind of person, you know this is critically important. You need to master this skill set, or you have people on your team that need to master this skill set. Um, you want results now, and you do have the ability to invest in yourself and your business, then let's have a conversation. Let's talk. Um, and Sean, if you'd be good enough to put that link in the chat box, click on the link, uh, give me a little bit of background, give me your phone number. I'm a phone person. I will call you. <laughs> And we will talk. There's no obligation to do uh, anything um, or buy anything. If I think I can help you, I will tell you that. If I think I can't help you, I will tell you that too. But uh, let's have a conversation. Um, and we can open up for questions. Perfect. Well, I'll, uh, I'll get started here and I'll answer Well, one of the questions um, we have here and we just go to it quickly, was uh, Ryan says the breakup call. Okay. Uh, well, John asked, you know, what are your thoughts on calling multiple times a week or day? Um, and what I'd also like to ask is, is there specific days um, that you recommend you call and leave the voicemail as well? Um, do you separate those voicemails and calls One's on a Tuesday, one's on a Thursday, or is it voicemail call on the same day? Um, I'm not sure I understand the last part of your question, Sean. Are you asking me about the voicemail email combination? Yes, yeah, sorry, voicemail email. So if okay. you were to do a voicemail email in week one, would that be both on a Monday or would you separate those and have one on a Monday, one on a Friday, one on a Tuesday, one on a Thursday? Okay, whatever day I'm calling, yeah. I leave the voicemail and I immediately send the email. Perfect. Okay. Um, and in terms of the best days, and I will, I will share with you that I hate this question. And I hate this question because I am always afraid that if I give you a day, yeah. you will not make phone calls on any other day except the day I tell you. So I always, I hate this question. Um, there is research that shows the response rate is highest Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. Um, that said, um, you don't actually know when any individual is going to be available. Um, I have a client who um, was actually getting a 20% response rate on his voicemails and emails, but he found counterintuitively, and he was calling very large organizations like the Bank of America. He was calling high-level executives at the Bank of America. He found counterintuitively the very best day for him was Friday afternoons yep. because everybody else was gone, <laughs> but he could reach the people that he uh, needed to reach. So what I would say to you, um, rather than asking me for a recommendation, is track what you're doing because you That's should good. do that anyways, and then you'll know what your numbers are. Yeah, perfect. Uh, John asked, is the eight touches only voicemails? I think Wendy went over that and showed you guys week one to week four. So it would be voicemails and email. Um, another question, at what point do you modify any of your voicemail? Once again, Wendy showed you that as well. Every week will be a, a, a unique email and um, voicemail. A question I have, Wendy, and I've used this in the past and it's, it's worked well. I know, so the breakup email at the end, I think it works really well. But what about using what you said at the beginning, you know, being a pest and these season and desist, but instead of, um, but, but giving them options at the end saying, you know, it might not be the right time or is it A, you don't have a budget, B, um, you know, you're using our competitor, C, it's bad timing, or D, like an A, B, C, D thing. So at least you can get that, what you call the most important, the response back, and at least you can know where you stand. Do you recommend that or are you against that? So yeah, are you saying in place of the, the move on message to make the last one I haven't heard from you? Is it, is it A, is it B, is it C? Yeah. 
So, so similar to what you do, you know, I don't want to be a pest. I don't want to continue to email you, but is the reason why you haven't replied a, you're too busy. B, you don't have a budget. C, you're currently with the competitor or D you're under contract, something like that. So that they can reply A, B, C, or D. And at that point you can say, okay, well, if they say they currently can't time, well, I'll reach back out in three to six months. Or they say, we're currently using a competitor. You can say, oh, when is your contract up with your competitor? Right. If, if, if you're doing a four call, four voicemails, four email yep. sequence, I would actually make that number three. Okay. And then I would leave the move on message. Um, if you find that you need more, sometimes, and we start with eight because that's the average. You might need more voicemails and emails depending on the market that you're in. So I would make that the next to last one. Got it. I know people were asking earlier on, and I, I think I said it, the cell number, was that was the company called Spy Dialer? Correct. Spydialer.com. Spy Dialer. Yeah. Perfect. So I put that in the chat. We have another question here. Is there any magic way to find out an email of a shop owner? Um, I know for email, there's a co company called Hunter.io, I believe people use. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a few other ones that you can find specific. Let me see um, see if I can... Uh... Uh, yeah, it's hunter.io forward slash search. Yes. Um, Alex, when I ask to speak with a person in charge of their cleaning service, the response I most often get are, we can take care of ourselves. We can take care of everything ourselves, or we are happy and have been using the same company for years. Any suggestions um, for these? That would be great. Yes, um, you're asking the wrong question. Uh, what, what was the name of that person? Was it Alex? Al you said? Alex. Alex, okay. Alex, you're asking the wrong, the wrong question. Um, ask for a title, not an activity. So what is the title, generally, of the person that would make that decision? Because when you ask for uh, the person that's in charge of cleaning whatever, that's an activity. If you say, I need to reach your director of whatever the title is, who would that be? Then you're going to get a name. Yep. Um, we have Alexa. How should our message, messaging change between e each outreach attempt in something like that four touch sequence or eight touch sequence? Well, the structure that we teach in the 3X appointments program is essentially uh your value proposition followed by a story that backs up your value proposition and i'm using the word story but i do not mean you're making it up <laughs> um it's it is a i call these success stories so uh for example um i gave you i gave you the example of the client that was in the 3x <coughs> excuse me the 3x appointments program um, that was reaching out to nonprofits, she helped them make money on their fundraising, uh, their fundraising events. So uh, her value proposition was something like, uh, we work with nonprofit agencies that are sick of losing their shirts on their fundraising events. That was the value proposition. And then she'd say, for example, we just worked with XYZ a uh, nonprofit agency, uh, last year they lost however much money they lost. This year we did their event and they raised however much money they raised. And she had a lot of stories like that so she could just swap out the stories. Um, and so you, you tell a story that backs up your value proposition. And that's, that is the basic structure. Uh, Robert, what about showing up at work or home address if we don't receive response. I would say don't show up at their home address, but uh, I'd love to hear what Wendy thinks about showing up at their work. Well, first of all, I guess it depends on where you are, yeah. uh, where you are physically located right now, um, but that might not be the best thing to do these days because people uh, might seriously freak out at you showing up on their doorstep, even if it is their place of business. Um, so, uh, you know, but even pre-COVID, I know a lot of people canvas, they walk into, uh, they walk into places of business. And that's really, it's a crapshoot. 
um, because maybe the person you want to talk to is there and will talk to you, but maybe they're not there. You can gather information. Um, you, you end up, most of the time you end up having to call them anyways. And True. so it, um, the only time I would really say, yeah, go ahead, walk in pre-COVID. And um, if you had, a, let's say, a series of appointments in a, in a special, you know, a, in a specific area, or you're here in Manhattan where I am, and you've got all these appointments in the same building, then you're in the building, go knock on some doors pre-COVID. But, um, you know, right now you can move so much more quick, quickly on the phone. Perfect. Uh, Louis asked, uh, we're going to take one more question here. At what point do you modify your message that may not be working? Well, you know, I mean, if you've gone through, if you're doing a four call campaign, so that's, uh, you're touching them eight times uh, over the period of a month and you need to have done, you know, at least I, I would say you probably want to have done four or 500 uh, dials during that time. So you've got some data, but you're going to know what, you, what your numbers are. If your the Zoom info number was 4.8% uh, response rate. If your response rate is under that, it's definitely not working. So then you want to tweak it. You might, the tweak might be that you need additional messages. The tweak might be that you need to change what you're saying. Um, the, uh, you'll know are people opening your emails if they're opening your emails but they're not responding that's a that's a sign that the messaging isn't working and the messaging is so critically important one of the things that we do in our 3x appointments program is we work with each person on all of their messaging because that at the end of the day is what's going to get the response perfect well um guys i you know i want to end it here but i want to have everyone let me know uh, if you enjoyed it. looks like, wow, Wendy, thank you so much. Your information was incredibly helpful. So I am so happy um, that we had Wendy here. I'll also put Wendy's link again in there. So if anyone wants to book a time with Wendy as well, I'm going to put my calendar and my email in there. If anyone has any questions about sales, auto close, our sales engagement tool, if you want a demo, you can also go on my Calendly. But Wendy, that was a wealth of knowledge. I want to thank you again. Um, we got to do this more often and not wait six years this time. But thank you so much for coming on. Um, it looks like everyone awesome. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Wendy. Great job. Looks like everyone really enjoyed what you had to say. I want to thank you once again for coming on today. Uh, my pleasure. And yes, sooner than six years. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me, for reaching out. And it was a pleasure uh, to virtually meet all of you today. So, yeah. Perfect. Thank you, guys. If anyone has any questions or needs Wendy's uh, contact information, I've put it in the chat again. Thank you guys so much. Hope everyone has a great rest of a Thursday, and we'll be in touch soon. Thank you. Bye.